The food we eat, like carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, are digested into its simplest form. Once in its simplest form, they are absorbed into the bloodstream and assimilated into the cells for its cellular activities. These activities need energy. The energy is ATP or adenosine triphosphate. This is considered as the energy currency of the cell. The process of producing materials for cellular respiration starts in the cytoplasm and storing this energy in the mitochondria. Welcome to our Biology Online Extra Class. This is Teacher Jeffrey. Today, our focus is on the biochemical processes involved in cellular respiration. We start with the introduction. According to the Biology Dictionary, cellular respiration is a process through cells convert sugars into energy ATP. It further states that ATP and other forms of energy power cellular reactions. Let us understand what ATP is or adenosine triphosphate. According to the Britannica Dictionary, this captures the energy released during cellular respiration to fuel cellular processes. The main function of cellular respiration is to provide the cells the needed energy, ATP, for it to function. What are the importance of cellular respiration? So number one, cells extract this energy from the bonds of glucose and other food molecules to form ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Number two, this ATP or adenosine triphosphate is the energy used or the energy currency of the cell. So the cell needs ATP to fuel its activities. So cellular respiration is described as a process when the cells break down glucose to form ATP. The biochemical processes during cellular respiration occurs in the cytoplasm first, then to the mitochondria. One important thing that we need to consider is where the energy is produced and stored. One of the organelles of the body is the mitochondria. It produces chemical energy in the form of ATP from the biochemical processes during cellular respiration. This is according to the National Human Genome Research Institute, and this mitochondria or mitochondrial DNA are inherited only from the mother. Another part of the cell that we need to understand and consider is the cytoplasm. This is where the first biochemical process called glycolysis occurs during cellular respiration. This is the word equation for cellular respiration. Glucose, with its product of carbon dioxide plus water, and energy in the form of ATP. From the word equation, we see that glucose forms the energy ATP, with its byproducts as carbon dioxide and water. That is why when we respire, we exhale carbon dioxide and with it, water vapor. Cellular respiration have four biochemical processes. These are the glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation, Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle, and electron transfer chain. So these are the main biochemical processes. First, glycolysis, then pyruvate oxidation, followed by Krebs cycle, and the last will be electron transport chain. Cellular respiration starts with glycolysis. Glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. Here, the glucose is split 
into pyruvate. So glucose is 6 carbon molecule to pyruvate which has 3 carbon molecule. So the goal in this biochemical process is to produce pyruvate. The pyruvate produced is then oxidized to become acetyl-CoA. The production of acetyl-CoA will activate Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. This occurs in the mitochondria. So the goal in pyruvate oxidation is to produce acetyl-CoA. Now we are in the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. This occurs in the mitochondria or what is known as the powerhouse of the cell. So we ended from pyruvate oxidation in the formation of acetyl-CoA. This acetyl-CoA will react with oxal acetate to form citrate. This is now the starting of the intermediates in the Krebs cycle. This biochemical process will produce NADH and FADH2 molecules. These are high energy electron carriers for electron transport chain to proceed. So the goal in the Krebs cycle is to produce NADH and FADH2. So now NADH and FADH2 are produced from Krebs cycle. We will now go to the last biochemical process, which is the electron transport chain or oxidative phosphorylation. This process also occurs in the mitochondria. So the goal of this process is to produce ATP from NADH and FADH2. These are the biochemical processes in cellular respiration. We have glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation, the Krebs cycle, and electron transport chain. This is the summary of what we have discussed today. First, we studied about the biochemical processes involved in cellular respiration, and these are glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation, Krebs cycle, and electron transport chain. Each of these occurs within the cell. Glycolysis and pyruvate oxidation occurs in the cytoplasm while Krebs cycle and electron transport chain occurs in the mitochondria. Each of these needs substance for it to proceed. These are the reactants. For glycolysis, we need glucose. For pyruvate oxidation, we need pyruvate. For Krebs cycle, we need acetyl-CoA. In electron transport, we need NADH and FADH2. Each of these processes will produce a substance. So this will be the product or the products. For glycolysis, we have pyruvate, so it forms 2 pyruvate. In pyruvate oxidation, it forms acetyl-CoA. In Krebs cycle, NADH and FADH2. And in the electron transport chain, the ATP. And it has also byproducts because during cellular respiration and even in our respiration, we excrete or exhale carbon dioxide and water vapor. Where will this occur? In Krebs cycle, carbon dioxide is released. And during electron transport chain, water vapor is released. Then we need to count the number of ATPs produced in each of the biochemical processes. For glycolysis, it's 2, in Krebs cycle 2, and electron transport chain 28. This ends our introduction to the biochemical processes involved in cellular respiration. Hope you have learned something today and please share this to your friends. This is Teacher Jeffrey. Bye for now.